So welcome everybody. I'm here presenting Andreas Mund, which uh, who will be talking about Debian Local Area Network. So welcome him. Thank you very much, Andreas. Out. Let's have a look. We all say Debian is the universal operating system. What does universal mean? Of course, you can take this word on different areas, and it's a pretty universal word. Uh, I'm taking this word and use it for the number of machines you want to manage. And we know this works pretty well with individual machines which you can install different kind of machines. You have the Debian installer. Uh, you can uh, you prepare the machines, configure them, and it works fine. We all know that. Then there is another uh, use of Debian in enterprises, big enterprises. We have several examples of this. And uh, um, What you usually need to do that is an office of sysadmins. So you need to have people to care about the systems and to configure them, to install it. Uh, that's something done and something that works. And what, what, the, what Debian LAN wants to do is to help you if you want to do something in between. So if you have a local area network, not in a big enterprise, but maybe in a school or in a university work group where you have your uh, take apart from the university network and really have it on your own, or in a small enterprise startup, something like that, non governmental organizations you want to support, <coughs> or associations, maybe in your home network with, for your family, just have centralized user management. Uh, backup system and so on, or you want to use uh, prepare a test environment. Maybe for Debian, you want to test network uh, uh, authentication, uh, NFS, or whatever. Where you need several machines, where you need it's not enough to te test a single machine. And this is where Debian local ar area network wants to help you with. Okay. Uh, so, what Debian LAN tries to do is to complement uh, Debian and make it possible or simplify it to uh, install Debian in small or middle-sized env environments. Okay, just an outline about my talk. We already, I already showed you the introduction. I will then continue now with goals, challenges, and the status of the Debian, Debian Local Area Network project. I will show you how it is done and how it works. We have to look a bit more into details because uh, Debian LAN uses Phi and you need to have an idea about how Phi works. And then I close with a summary and conclusion. Okay, let's have a look at the goals and challenges as well as of the status. I already said it, uh, Debian LAN tries to help you setting up a local area, area network as easy as possible, only with uh, software in Debian, and it tries this to do this as flexible as possible. So what are the challenges? You want to have a simple installation, simple setup, and of course, maintenance and upgrade should be also as simple as possible. And with maintenance, it's not only the maintenance of the uh, network after we've set it up, it's also the maintenance of this information you used uh, to build this Debian local area network. And uh, yeah, it has to be updated for every uh, Debian release, of course. And this needs also to be done in a way that is maintainable. Uh, every network 
is slightly different from another one. So probably you want to change something in the setup. And these modifications, should it should be possible to implement these modifications easily. And finally, uh, it wants to use only Debian stable repo repositories and no extra packages. Okay, what's the status uh, for the time being? Uh, there are two, um, say, network topologies Debian LAN supports. One is shown in the up upper picture. You have a dedicated ga gateway and a main server. And then you have client machines. You can have a diskless client machine, a standard workstation, or a roaming machine. Uh, from the user experience, all these uh, client machines are the same. But for diskless machines, you don't need to have a hard drive. It just mounts the file system uh, from the main server. And for the roaming machine, you have um, caching of credentials. So after you've logged in, having the machine in, in this local area network, you can remove it from the network, take it at home, for example, laptop, and you can still log in. And you have uh, two home directories, which you might want to synchronize or something like that. Uh, then there is a second network topology where the main server acts also as gateway. You need two interfaces in that uh, system. And uh, the firewall, which is which uh, uh, implemented in the gateway in the upper setting, is included in the main server in the lower setting. Uh, these machines, I've just wrote down a few uh, attributes. The gateway has a firewall, does masquerading. <coughs> And then the main server, it, we have only one server and it provides all services. So most important are uh, authentication, Kerberos, KDC. Then we have, have a directory service, LDAP. We have Kerberized NFS version 4 home directories, which are provided by the server. We have an internal email system and much more. I come to that later. Then on the clients, you can install every desktop er environment you like, and you can, of course, install other packages. For example, if you're in a university mathematics uh, workgroup, you can uh, use the packages provided by the Debian blend of mathematics or uh, biology or physics, whatever you need. Or if you're in a school, you want to provide educational software, <coughs> And maybe if you're uh, in a, a medical institution, you w want from Debian the packages from Debian Mate, and you can uh, tune the the workstations as as you want. Then, <coughs> as I said, the diskless workstations, same as uh, normal workstations, and the roaming machines. As I said, they just cache the credentials. Okay, what services have been imp implemented on the main server? It provides uh, DNS and DHCP. A Kerberos KDC is configured. Then I already said that LDAP home directories are dis distributed via Kerberos NFS4. We use GOSA for user management. GOSA is a um, tool used by the city of Munich to handle their uh, infrastructure, so it's implemented here as well. Then uh, Kerberized local email, so there is uh, Exim configured and Dovecut, and you have a, a every user can uh, can have his own homepage for the intranet. The system is monitored by Akinga and Munin. Disk quota is implemented. You just have to add the, uh, the size you want to, to uh, allow. Then there is a, a web proxy. 
a package cache. You c if you uh, need to uh, provide packages not in Debian, there is a pre-configured local app repository where you just drop a package, run a little script, and from then on it will be available on all machines. A uh, firewall is implemented. Edge Keeper, just to see what your configurations, uh, how they develop. System backup, and <coughs> you can install the machines over the network. How this works, I will explain soon. And much more, or a few things more that are not so uh, important. Okay, <coughs> now we come to the next topic. How is it done? I want to uh, explain how the Debian LAN installation works, and to understand that you need a, a, a rough idea about how PHY works. And I will explain that, the class concept to you, and I will just show you the installation procedure, uh, how that works. And then we uh, I focus on the Debian LAN system and how it's implemented there. Okay, we start with a general question. You want to roll out this, this network with different machines. And so in the beginning, you ask yourself what is needed to install an arbitrary machine. So that's what you need to know. And well, it's more or less when you run an installation, what you the insta installer asks you. So uh, in the beginning, it usually asks you how to uh, prepare your disk, what partitions do you want to use or to create, and this is the first thing you need to know. Then you uh, choose some packages. Uh, that's what's going to be available on that machine later. And finally, these packages have to be configured, or more generally, the whole system has to be configured, and there are two ways to do that. Uh, you can use debconf preceding, or if it's not implemented and for some uh, configurations it probably does not make sense to implement it as debconf configuration, you have to uh, prepare, edit, manipulate configurations. Uh, and that's all information you need for every machine. And uh, this has to be provided. And the more st structured and flexible this information is provided, the more you can make use of. Because you have maintained this information, you want to modify it, you have to update it, uh, things develop. So uh, this, I this information you want to, uh, you need to uh, provide in a well-structured and flexible way. And one uh, uh, possible way to do is that is to use file, uh, short for fully automatic installation. Just uh, to get an idea, who of you uh, has an idea about file? Okay, so maybe half of you. Uh, <coughs> I will now just explain you how it works. So uh, you don't have to know the details, but you should have a, an, an idea about the general uh, concept. So Phi uses classes. Uh, just think of uh, not a complicated uh, programming classes, but just like uh, like um, containers where you where you can drop actions or attributes in. And every host every host name is mapped on a set of classes. So this is important. Every machine is a member of a set of classes. And these classes define uh, the com com complete setup of the machine. So we said, in the said just in the slide before, we need to uh, provide uh, how we uh, prepare the disks. This is defined in a class. We have to 
define which packages we want to use. This is also defined in a class, and then we have to run the configuration. And all this is uh, available in these classes. And these classes are defined in a so-called phi config space. And I just <coughs> uh, show you here a directory listing of such a config space, just the top level. Um, it's just a directory structure with some files in it. And from the file name, uh, it the file name defines which class the file uh, the file um, connects to. <laughs> so when we start with the uh, directory class, this is uh, a directory w which with some scripts which uh, map the host name onto classes. There are also some vari variables defined there, which you can use when you do the installation. Then there is the directory depconf, and there you can populate the depconf database with preceding by preceding, and uh, you can do this for every class you want in a different way. And then we have the disconfig. Uh, that's where I started the slide before. We have to provide uh, uh, some information about how we want to partition our hard disk. That's in the disconfig directory. Then we may want to drop some files on the system. We can put them in the files directory. We want to run hooks during the installation. Uh, then we can drop these hooks in the hooks directory. Package config. In this directory, for every class, there is a file that lists all packages that have to be installed on a machine, which is a member of this class. This class. Uh, then we need, in some cases, to run some, uh, a script or scripts to configure the system in detail. That's in the scripts directory. And finally, uh, that's a, a more or less something we don't have to care about because Phi cares about it, are the tests. So at the end of the installation, you can run tests and check if everything worked as you wanted or whatever. Okay, just an example to make that a bit more clearer. Uh, I said we have a gateway host, and this, this gateway is associated with the following classes. There's the class Firebase, Debian, DHCPC, Firewall, and Gateway uh, A. And so what do these classes mean? Uh, Firebase is just a, a basic class which every host usually uh, is a member of. It just does uh, the, the, the basic stuff on the machine, what you usually need always. Uh, Debian is uh, a class where all Debian-specific basic uh, stuff is done. DHCPC means you want to have uh, this machine access a, as a DHCP client. And then firewall, that's where we uh, set up the firewall thing. And gateway A, that's a class which, uh, which separates uh, machine-specific stuff, stuff from the firewall. So you have the firewall class is used to be useful on every machine you want to have a firewall on. And then maybe on this in this specific setup, there's a special configuration, you put that into the gateway. Okay? And all packages defined in these classes will be installed and configured accordingly. Uh, if we want to look a bit more into detail of the firewall class, for example, we can look in our config space and uh, look for the uh, file name firewall. And we see there are two occurrences of firewall. There is config package config firewall. So this is, this is where the packages are defined you want to use on that machine as firewall. And then uh, you need to configure that, that firewall that's done in the scripts. 
And if you look into these files, you will see that uh, the package shawwall will be installed, and you have to provide some configuration for that for that uh, package, which is done in the scripts firewall. Okay, Phi allows to install uh, the machines. You can it, it works in the following way. You boot a Phi live system from CD, from USB stick, or over the network via PXE. And then you uh, mount the Phi config space. So just the, uh, the directory structure I just showed you, you mount that on the machine. You can use NFS there as default, or even um, connect to a Git rep repository, or there's a huge amount of things you uh, you just need to get the information to the local host uh, and then you map the host main to its classes and then the machine is depending on its classes and being to is going to be installed so first it's starting to partition the local hard drive then it configures the packages, or it precedes the depconf database. Then it stalls, installs all packages, and it configures the target system. It runs the scripts, and after you boot from the local hard disk, your host is set up exactly as you wanted it. You have another uh, mode which Phi can run as. That's the soft update mode. Uh, you can run it on an already installed machine, and it will do almost the same as above, but it uh, will skip the partitioning of the hard drive, fortunately. <laughs> um, but apart from that, it's, it's more or less the same. Of course, you can make in your scripts a decision if you want to run parts of your script only if you're in the install mode or only if you're in the soft update mode. So these two modes are important for Debian LAN. <coughs> I will now uh, focus how we use or I use Phi to uh, install the Debian LAN system. Uh, what Debian LAN does, it just provides this complete Phi config space for the networks I, I explained earlier. And uh, to get started, to roll out such a network, you uh, have two possibilities. You can just uh, prepare such a Phi CD yourself. You ma you this, Phi this Phi CD contains the um, configuration space. space. It's like a uh, net install CD. And if you prepare this CD yourself, you if you already want to make modifications to your setup, you can put this in your configuration spa space before you build the CD. After that, you have uh, a customized CD, net install CD, where you can immediately install your uh, main server um, exactly like you wanted it. Or there's an alternative way where uh, you we use the Phi soft update. So with this method, you install a minim minim minimal Debian installation with the Debian installer, for example, as few packages as possible, and you run, you just install Phi and uh, yeah, it's, it's four or three commands, um, you just install Phi, and then you run, you, you, you name the host main server, and you run the Phi soft update, and it will uh, convert this minimal installation in a m into a, a Debian LAN main server. After you've installed the main server, you've mostly done. All other machines you can boot over the network and install over the network. When you take an uh, unknown machine, a machine unknown to the network, plug it in and boot it over the network, you get uh, the following installer. So uh, it looks like the usual Debian installer. In fact, it, it is a Debian installer, which you can boot. You can boot just uh, standard 
Debian PXE installer, but additionally, you can run a Debian LAN live system. So this system does not touch your hardware at all. Uh, for example, if you want people bring their own laptop to your network, you can they can just boot uh, via PXE, and they have the uh, their the yeah the, the standard system available on their own machine. Um, you can also install a roaming machine. Just have to choose the uh, point in the menu, and the, uh, yeah, that's that's all so far. If the machine uh, is known to the network, which means that it uh, its MAC address is you add the MAC address to the DHCP server, then immediately after you boot from the network, it will be uh, start the file installation. Those of you which have run a file installation, it's that's how it looks like, and just you don't have to do anything like fully automatic uh, means. So after some minutes, your machine will be set up and included into the network and run out of the box. Okay, I want to go a bit more into detail about these file classes uh, that are prepared by Debian LAN because that's of course the, the uh, heart of the whole system. So the main server maps onto the following classes. We already learned a bit about Firebase, Debian, and then there is the file server class. It uh, includes all that is needed to make the machine a server which can provide the TFTP environment to boot other machines over the network from this server and to inst install then uh, from that from that server. Then there is the class LVM8A, that's just a short name for the partitioning. So it, it, for the pa it, it defines the partitioning, it means something like local volume manager and the number of partitions is eight. And if you want to just to uh, have an idea when you just read it, uh, how exactly the setup is done, you have to look into that class. Then it's a member of the diskless server class, so anything that is needed to set up uh, the provision of diskless machines is implemented in that class. Firewall class, we already had it. It's a CUP server, so the uh, print printing is configured there. It collects all logs from the network, it acts as a proxy, it provides network time protocol to the network. It's in implemented in the NTP server class. It's a DNS server, network file system server, mail server. It's an LDAP client, uh, uh, as well as an LDAP server to the network. It's a Kerberos client. It provides the Kerberos KDC. Uh, then there is uh, the KDC uses LDAP as a database. And this is implemented in the KDC LDAP class. And then, of course, uh, these classes are not completely independent, so there need to be a server class, server A class, which, which does all the uh, stuff that can't be associated with one of these classes. And finally, GOSA, which, I which integrates the graphical user interface for managing the, the uh, system. Um, we can take a look at the workstations. That's, of course, much simpler. Uh, what is new there? We are a CUPS client, a LOC client, LDAP client, NFS client, Kerberos client. New is XORG and the desktop class, which defines, okay, I want to have XFCE or GNOME or whatever on my system. Um, what is the philosophy behind these five classes? From the class names, it became clear that uh, for every service, for every feature, there has been implemented, it, it, it has been tried to implement it as a separate class. Uh, and only non specific. Uh, modifications which cannot be associated with 
uh, one ind individual features or which sort of connect to two features, they have tried to put it be put in the server class or client class. And uh, you can easily extend this class space. You can just add, uh, for example, a class edu if you want to pro provide a, sh a school with software. Uh, in fact, this class is already available in the Debian LAN config space, which says, okay, on my desktop machine, I want to have this educational software as well. Or if you're a developer, you need some development software, put that in the dev class or the loca localization you can put in the uh, German or French Belgian class or whatever. And yeah, it's completely uh, easily to modify and extend it without touching touching the um, original system. So you have added your class. If it works, if it doesn't work anymore after you've added that class, it's clear what to do, uh, that something in your class went wrong. So you can always easily go back. Just do not map your host on your new class. And if things work again, you know that something with your class is wrong and has to be fixed. And this leads to a very nice development and maintenance uh, features. For example, if my uh, network time protocol setup doesn't work anymore, I just have to look in this class, either on the server where I set up the NTP server or on the clients. It's pretty clear in this config space where, where you have to look for, for a fix. Okay, and this is because of this uh, complex system, which every component is not so complicated, but all in all, it's, it's get, uh, a network easily gets pretty complicated. But with this structured uh, setup, it's, I made the experience that it's really easy to add features and to debug features. Uh, there are also the Phi internal uh, debug features help because you, you get logs for every installation of packages, for every script you see if it worked or if it, uh, the script failed. And if you do this in a careful way, you have really a, a, a very good setup, which, which works pretty nice so far. Um, then with these classes, you get a sort of a modular system. You can take these modules and, for example, Oh, I will show an example later. If you want to have two machines or uh, different setups, you can take part of the classes and get rid of others. Um, and as I already said, it's easy to extend the system. Okay, just an example uh, how you can reuse these classes. For example, if you have this gateway set up, you might want to include a proxy there. So it is easy to be done by just um, moving the proxy class to the gateway, and then you have to check if, uh, if you need to uh, adapt the server A and the gateway A class for, uh, for uh, to make it work again. Of course, it's, it changes a bit, but you already have a rough idea what to do. Or another sick example is if you want to split that on two servers, uh, you just add the new machine to your uh, mapping, which does the mapping from the host name to the classes, and you map all classes you want to move from one machine to the other, you remove it from the one machine, the classes, and add it to the other machine. And uh, after that, you fine-tune the setup by adapting the server B, and you have a, uh, a server. You need to create a server B class then, and uh, yeah, you need to make it work again. Okay, I'm coming to more or less to the end now, so we have time for questions, but first I want to give you here's a list of uh, resources where you find more information about the project and the system. Uh, 
I use the Debian LAN wiki. Uh, there is now a package available, and it just made it to backports. So the system is always uh, targeted at the at the stable Debian release, <coughs> and yeah, you can fetch the, the config space from this uh, backports package, and uh, just take a look at the uh, user share doc Debian LAN config readme, and there it's described how you set it up. It's pretty easy, it's just a few commands. And we have a Git repository where all the work is done, and a mailing list, so if you run into problems or if everything works great, please report to the uh, mailing list. And uh, so far, uh, I can sum up and conclude that Debian LAN provides a way to install a complete Debian-based network out of the box, including Kerberized services, central user management, diskless clients, and roaming machines. I use Phi to set up that system and in to install the machines. <coughs> uh, in my experience, this works pretty nice very transparent, very flexible, very clean. And you are invited to provide additional classes if you want to make it work uh, different from what it's done right now. Maybe it does already work. It would be fine, of course, as well. And so if you plan to install a system of that kind, then I would be happy to if you would consider and give Debian LAN a try. And that's so far everything. Thank you very much for your attention, and I think we have some time for questions. Hello. Uh, it's not exactly a question. Uh, it's about the system of classes. Uh, a few few days ago, uh, Martin Kraft, alias Matt Duck, uh, pro provided uh, a conference about a tool he called Reclass, which is about uh, externalizing all this class system with inheritance, and it looks like exactly. And this I his idea uh, of this tool is to, uh, to to manage your data and describe it. And in the end, uh, a, tool, a specific tool such as F uh, Fi or anything else would apply that. So uh, I feel it's a nice split. And uh, maybe someday Fi would use it. But uh, I wanted to tell you about. OK, thank you. Uh, I have to look at that. I, uh, I have a comment about this. I guess uh, FAI is uh, mostly about uh, installing the thing and uh, and bringing up the machine, and I guess the other tool is uh, mostly about uh, managing an already installed machine and uh, making changes to it. This is my point of view on that. Okay. I feel more it's about describing, and <coughs> some other tool will apply it. One question. Um, you, are, you have a lot of Phi classes, so I think m maybe nearly 25 classes. I think then that, that it's, it's a very good idea to have a lot of classes to, to be very flexible. But for example, in a school environment, I think um, the, the teacher, who is also the admin of a Debian LAN system, uh, does not like to, to adjust the classes, but he likes to have a tool to say, I have two new machines. I want to say this machine is a workstation, a disk list, or a roaming machine. Uh, do you also have some tools that make it very easy for a teacher admin um, to, to add new machines, or does he have to edit the DHCP config, the DNS config, or uh, did, did, um, are you using Goza for this, that he just clicks on the three buttons and then he can add new machines to his LAN? Uh, I, I try to keep uh, 
as much as possible of GOSA. So I only have the user uh, management, so the things that changes quite often, or more often after you've set up the, uh, the network, only this is done in GOSA. If you want to add a machine, there th I, uh, I prepared a script where you can just uh, give the command Debian LAN, add to DHCP, and I think then uh, it, 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 it you, you have to switch on the machine you want to add and switch all others off, and it, it checks in the ARP cache uh, for the uh, MAC address, and you can choose if you want to install that machine as a diskless machine or um, workstation. And um, then it then this if you've done that, the script adds the uh, the MAC address to the DHC DHCP configuration, and it to the DNS system it's transferred via um, dynamic setup. So it, it the, the MAC address is only uh, if you want to change yeah. that you. You, you, it's only in, in this one point, and then, um, yeah. So it's not graphical, but it's pretty simple. And yeah, I hope it's 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 always a, a trade-off. What you implement has to be maintained. Yeah, and uh, uh, Jen, just it's great because I, I was waiting for such a script for a long time and I never had the time to write it by my own. So now I know <laughs> there's this script for a very simple setup, add a new machine to a file configuration. Thank you very much for the script. I will look at it. <laughs> yeah, but I have been using Goza for a pretty long while, so um, it might have been much improved since then, but already at the time I used it, it made adding a machine to Goza's database and defining what the machine should do really, really easy without having the need to like turn off everything else and just turn off the machines I have to have a clean up cache. Um, so why exactly did you keep the integration with Goza to a minimum? Because, I mean, it's got tools to administrate the mail server, printers, clients, everything. Um, yeah, I, uh, I got the impression that it's, it's not supported that more upstream. And I had problems with, for example, the Kerberized uh, stuff. Because um, I have to provide a, a, the, the key tab to the machine and things like that, and it's not the the Gosa people did it with some some agent thing, and but it never made it into uh, Debian. And whenever I ask them about this this service which which cares about this Kerberization st stuff, they said ah oh, it, it it was uh, sometimes working, sometimes not, and it's not a quality they really want to uh, make a package of. And so after all this. Um, happening and if you look at the upstream repository of Gosa and then there was this fork so I don't want to depend on it too much and you can also switch off this Gosa class so if you say okay I'm I'm managing my users I've I've, I'm using there is a package in Debian it's called LDAP scripts where you can add users uh, to LDAP and you can use that without Gosa just to I think there's even a, a little script provided by Devin Lan which you can, you prepare a list of users, just uh, uh, first name, second name, and you send this script to the, uh, you send this, you, you, you send this list to the script, and it just takes the name and creates a username and. Uh, creates all users in one one batch. So if you're if you're a bit familiar with command line and I think in the end you have to be that if you really want to run a, a, a Linux network then uh, it should work and maybe if there is there are demands or wishes for better tools we can think about it but it's always someone has to do the work so it's now done uh, that it works fine for me everybody's 
welcome to contribute. And uh, well, we will see what it evolves into. Uh, time over. Thank you very much, Andreas, again. And uh, uh, the next talk will be in a um, quarter of hour. I don't really remember about what. <laughs>